Hey guys, and welcome back to the WT Farm Girl channel. Today we are going to go visit the Giles Family Maple Syrup Farm. Now on their farm, they farm approximately 15 acres of maple trees to produce maple syrup. Their trees consist mostly of sugar maples with a few silver maples. The farm has been in the family for several generations. Previously, they used to do buckets. Now with both of them working, they find that the vacuum line system is a lot more convenient. We're gonna see exactly how their farm operates. Let's go. As you know, we are not doing maple syrup season this year. We are taking a year off for the first time since we started the farm. But that's because we've got projects that need to get done and we want to see how some of the more experienced people are doing it. We have here today, I'm Jessica Giles. Uh, we're Giles Sugar Shack. And she taps about five to 700 trees. And uh, so let's take a look at their system they also do a vacuum system so we're gonna look at that real quick and see if we can get some tips we're gonna look at how their evaporator system set up and we'll just we'll show you guys let's go so this is how you guys bring your wood in right yes now this is a really nice now does this whole thing last an entire cook or do you have to go through multiple loads no of it? we go through two to three of them um, during a typical evening and how long do you guys cook for it during each spell? So it really kind of depends. We both work outside of here, so most evenings during the week we will cook for five to six hours. We usually wrap up between 11 and 12 o'clock at night. Oh. Um, on weekends we'll do 12 to 14 hour cook days. So you guys just keep your sap and you just take it out when you need it and you feel like cooking? Or do you um, do like batches of sap? Like here's we, a whole batch. We, we kind of do batches of sap. Uh, when we get out I can kind of show you. We store we as much as 1,500 gallons of sap oh. in our collection tanks. Um, and a lot of it is automated on pumps the way that we have it hooked up. Um, so right now the sap that we're boiling is in this tank in the back. Okay. Um, this holds 250 gallons. Um, to oh. bring more in, okay. we flip a light switch and it'll pump it in from the outside and it'll feed into the system. Okay. Um, now do you guys have a preheater set up? It looked like you guys were working on something online. We do. Um, I, I can actually have Tom show you that. That was his baby this year. Um, it's increased our efficiency by about 30 gallons an hour of sap. Really? Yes. Awesome. Because we all know that the longer you cook, the more time's involved. So there is a preheater in there now. That's what this oh, section am I supposed to that. You can look up there if you want. Hopefully I can. I don't know if you'll see a lot of steam. Okay, yeah, I see the steam. Now, those pipes. Oh, wow, that's really deep in there. So, the pipes basically, you can see it's pumped in here. Let me close this back yep. up for you. So, it's pumped in here. Yep. And then it travels through a network of pipes in here. So the fire from the fire pan um, heats up that preheating system and the sap runs through it before it hits the back pan. Um, I don't know if you could see underneath the pipes there, but they were like gutters, stainless steel, um, and they collect all of the condensation that comes off of them. So it prevents that moisture from going back into the pan. Uh, so it's less water that we have to boil off, but then we also get hot water out here. We have a sink, but there's only cold water. So if you want to come around, I know it's kind of out of the way. All of the water that comes off from those gutters feeds out here so that we don't oh have to boil it goodness. back in. So we have hot water to wash everything up and wash the floors at the end of the night because it gets kind of sticky in here. <laughs> wow, that's a neat idea. I've never seen anybody recycle. Who's, who you thought it, didn't you? Uh, I got it from a friend. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, that is very cool. Now this is your arch, this is your firebox. Yep. And then what size evaporator is this? Three by 10. Three by 10, wow. And then you've got the syrup pan down there. Yep. Yes. So now, 
For those of you guys who don't know, this is a steam collection hood on the top, which basically sucks all the steam up and out, which makes it more efficient. Eric kind of manufactured his own version of this with a couple two by one by twos and some plastic. So this is like the professional setup with professional hot water. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, oh, so you got like. This is another steam collection HUD. Yep. Yes. Now, does it bother you that you can't actually check on your cooking sap in here? So, we can't in the back, but we've never had problems with it, and every time we clean out the pan, it's flawless back there. So you've never had issues with this, like, overcooking your syrup, like, yeah. foaming? Yeah. Foaming? No, we use foamer. I've used a foamer, and I still get it. Like, at the end of season, it'll always just... How religious are you with it? pretty like every time I uh, take a draw I'll add some defoamer in. Every time I fire that fire box I, I put a drop just a drop or two of defoamer in there. Yeah. And last year I had the same issue where I had a lot of foam in there and it would constantly be almost charting the side yeah. a little bit. It's crystal clear in there. I, wa I washed it the other day and there's no sign of burning. Wait you washed the inside of this? Yes. yes. So you drained the entire thing and you washed it? Yep. Yes. Where did you put all this at? Wow. Out of we collect it and refilter it so that we can run it. Okay, so how long do you guys usually cook? What is the time frame you usually cook maple syrup from between tapping and final cook? You know, it really kind of depends on the season. Last year, our season was really short. I think we tracked 17 days that we had total. Um, the year prior, we got six weeks yeah. almost out of it. Um, and so far we're 12 days in here. And so it really depends on the weather. Um, once it gets to the point where we have a few days in a row where it's not freezing at night anymore, the treats will start to bug, the sap will turn bitter, and you can't boil it anymore. So yeah. we are completely at the mercy of Mother Nature. So when did you guys tap this year? February? February 15th. 15. Oh, okay. How long do you think it's gonna run? Hopefully another two weeks. Yeah. I don't know. We got another week for sure. Next week at looks good, but after that, the, the lows aren't as good as I would like. But. Yeah. So you need that cooler temperature at night. Yeah. So how many gallons have you guys made already? Oh goodness, 83. Okay. Now what do you normally do per year? 150. Okay. So you're co coming up on that. We're getting there. We need 150. <laughs> so hopefully the season cooperates. <laughs> Now, how many trees did you tap this year? I don't know how many trees we tapped. We've got about 500 taps right now. Okay. Um, it's about half of our woods because we can't really keep up with more sap flow right. than we get. Right. Um, we don't ever put more than two taps in a tree, so we probably have 300 or so trees tapped. Okay. No, so that it was actually an old return line, and I'll show you why. Oh, we don't for the use air return, because you use a do you use a milk? Milk vacuum? Milk we house. don't. It's actually made for syrup. Um, but oh. So we used to have tanks on that side of the system and we'd have to pump back from those tanks, but we don't anymore because of the vacuum system and I'll show you why. Oh, okay. Um, so you mentioned wanting to see some taps, so this is pretty standard. We'd never use more than two taps in a tree. Some people will put three to four even a, in a big tree, but we have enough trees that we don't have to do that. These are the taps here. Um, we drill them an inch and three quarters into the tree. Um, these are called drop lines because they drop down into the lateral lines. And here, um, the trees emit gas while the vac is on it. So you can see it pulling through and you can see the sap running through the lines. And this line is completely full of sap. You can see that sun reflecting right in there. So do you know like what, do you have a pressure gauge to know like we how do. many? We it's usually 20 to 25 um, oh, inches okay. of mercury. Okay. So that black return line that you were asking about, okay. I'm so this is the very then. last pump. This line. is one of the last lines here. Um, <clears throat> but if we walk back here, I'll actually show you what's called a sap ladder. And it's the reason that we don't need to oh, use a return line yes, yes. anymore. This, is, this yeah. is what we need on ours because we were tapping like 15 feet into the air. Yes. So this is what's called a sap ladder. Oh my gracious. I have never seen one of these before. Spider web. Um, this is not what I thought it was gonna look like. But 
because it is on a vacuum system, there's pressure that's generated and I'm not a physics person, <laughs> but something to do with the diameter of the tubing, that big tubing sucking yeah. into the small tubing, kind of like a straw. Is this 5 sixteenths? It is. Okay. And it augments the amount of pressure from the vacuum system and it lets us to pull our sap uphill. So against gravity. So now we wow. don't have to have tanks on opposite sides of the woods. Look how fast that is moving. Shoot. The trees are happy today. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So then all of our laterals feed into our main lines that we have on various sections of the wood. And those are connected to the vac system and the vac shack. And we've got to go down around to the other side of the woods wow. to get to that. How long did it take you guys to put this whole thing together? Because oh, it's good a lot of... goodness. Um, so we've been expanding on it the last couple of years. Um, now, on a yearly basis, we leave our wires and our <coughs> main lines out. And we <coughs> flush them with a sanitizing solution. And the yeah. only thing we take down are taps. All right. So I think now to get it back up and going, it takes us maybe a whole weekend just right. to run our lines, fix our lines, and put our taps in. Yeah. Wow. So this one is low. So that used to be where we used to have our tanks. Oh, that okay. Yeah. There. Yeah. Um, they all fed to that spot, but it's not needed anymore. <laughs> it's kind of loud in there. Oh yeah. But so you have a whole dedicated little. Little shack. shack. Yeah, it's the back shack. <laughs> okay, so even their pump gets a shack, and I'm getting complaints about an office. <laughs> yeah. So all of our main lines run into here. Um, I'll point it out when I get in, um, but it's kind of loud. The light blue metallic um, piece of equipment there, that's actually the back itself. Um, and then the other piece is, so it goes up to a humidity catch, which is that clear um, tube that's there. Okay. And then the releaser is the bright blue here. So it gets pulled in through the back. Um, it looks like we're running uh, about 22 to 23 inches of mercury per pressure right now. Um, it gets pulled into this tank. Once it hits a certain level, um, it releases into our storage tank. And then there is a stainless steel sump in there and it pumps it up to the shack for us. Oh, okay. So is that run underground or? Nope. Um, that dark one is the return line. <laughs> so the light blue feed in and the dark blue brings it back to the shack for us. So it's able to push the sap up this whole line? Yes. Really? Yes. And that's going uphill. Into oh, that's a pretty. Collection tank. Wow. It's made life a lot easier. <laughs> Okay, so you've got two pumps. You've got one to vacuum it out and one to push, push it out. It up, yes. And the one that pushes it out is kind of your standard sump pump that you might have in your basement. Right. Yep. Oh, um, interesting. You can see if you want to look inside of there, I can flip the light on, but you can see the sap pouring into that back one. Oh, yeah, yeah. all being collected in here? Um, yeah, it pumps through here, collects into oh. there, and then pumps back up to the shack. Well, I'm glad you clarified that because I thought that was like an outhouse <laughs> toilet and I was going to ask you if I could use it real quick. <laughs> oh, I could use an outhouse. <laughs> I'm building a bathroom in the bar and I'll have one next to There you go. Yeah, because I mean, even though it's not far to run from the sugar shack to your house, it's still a pain in the butt. It is. We get a lot of visitors, and oh, that's I mean, true. as nice as people are, <laughs> right? Want everyone running through the house. Exactly. Muddy boots. Yeah, and just yeah. One more thing to worry about. <clears throat> I know. Where do you guys predominantly sell your maple syrup? Do you sell it online? You sell it in stores? You just sell it to family and friends? A little bit of everything. So family, friends, uh, word of mouth work. I sell a ton at work. Um, Grange. Fruit Farm sells a bunch of our syrup oh, for okay. us up on 13 miles, so farm markets, and then we go and sit at farm markets to sell our syrup. Um, the last couple years we've done a couple of different collaborations. Uh, Perrin bought a bunch of our syrup and made a beer with it last year. Really? That's awesome! Um, we'll see, we've got some things in the work with a distillery um, to not only do bourbon syrup, but then take oh. our syrup and do bourbon infused whiskey with it. Yeah. Um, so that could be kind of fun. That sounds delicious. 
Well, the vehicles are multiplying. Yeah, it's pretty standard. It's like you can see the smoke all the way down the road and people know what it is and they just show up. <laughs> and yet another reason to have a nice professional, semi-professional sugar shack <laughs> and not a tent. Well, thank you so much for your tour. It was Thanks. nice to meet you. Thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. I appreciate it so much. And if you are not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Turn that red button gray because you don't want to miss all the cool stuff that's going to be coming up. And don't forget to hit that bell. Yeah. Until next time guys, take care. Bye.